This should probably be pretty obvious from the title of this podcast, but before anyone gets properly into this, I would like to issue a quick disclaimer here that there are major spoilers for George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, the source material for the Game of Thrones TV show. If you guys haven't read that, first of all, pause this, go read it, and come back. It is excellent. My pick for the greatest fantasy series of all time. And what are you doing here? Second of all, you might want to click off of this podcast after the audiobook portion if you do plan to read that series in the future and don't want spoilers. To a lesser extent, the same goes for the TV show. Though we don't explicitly spoil anything exclusive to the show, most of the events leading up to about season 5 take place in both forms of media, so... Yeah, you've all been warned. It was 3CP and I. There was no way it wasn't going to happen. I hope you guys all enjoy the podcast. After about 20 minutes of nonsensical banter, I suppose we should actually start this thing. (laughs) Bold of you to assume that was only 20 minutes. Uh, There are some things that are just easier not to keep track of. (laughs) Or dwell on. Yeah, you would know that very well, wouldn't you? I would. Thank you so much for pointing out. For those of you unaware, the lovely voice you hear in the background is the same voice who was on a number of the audiobooks and belongs to one of the original active members of the server in terms of it at the period it really started to grow. The Golden Age. The gold, Yeah. No, it was in a lot of ways, though, because a lot of our most active members joined right around that time. Yeah, pretty much. The Golden Age started when, I would say, Fezzik and Luck joined, and it ended when I joined. No, 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 no. The Golden Age started in the week where me, Reggie, and two other people who I've forgotten but were important all joined <laughs> within, like, I think five days of each other. I don't think Sothis was in that week, but she was close. Mm-hmm. Sothis was, like, a little bit before that, yeah. Yeah, I think she was a couple of weeks before. Mm. But, yeah, no, it was, it was a period of, I'd say, about six months. I'd say, honestly, June until the end of 2021. Or, sorry, 2020 yeah. was. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, the days when we had 25 memes a day. Hmm. Curse you luck for ruining that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I blame luck almost exclusively for that. Well, so does the meme maker, so that's not, you know, far-fetched. Yeah. We need to organize another meme where I still have something pinned in my DMs from, like, the first or second time that Ace and I ever (laughs) talked. Yeah, oh, I still God. do now and again just go out to AOC Forge with memes and scroll up as far as I can because there was <laughs> some gold. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was one. Didn't we have a C- I, We're probably going to say CIA a few times in this call. It's a group yeah. chat with myself, Regress, and 3CP. Um, wasn't there a CIA call a while? And I mean, a while, probably the summer, mm. where we literally just sat there and all started pulling old AOC memes and started joking about them and seeing how relevant yeah. they were nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, some of them were painful in that their accuracy had only increased. Yeah, yeah, some <laughs> of them aged really, really, really well. Degree. Yeah, others not so much. Others aged like no, but yeah, yeah. But the ones that aged well, a lot of them had to do with not so much the characters in the story, but the people on the Discord server. And yeah, they aged just really well. Yeah, almost prophetic in places. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> do you really want that man's ego to get any larger? That was more of an inside joke, but cool. Oh. That man was referring to regress. I know what you're getting at, but that's only going to make the ego part worse, not better. True, but it's bold of you to think he's ever going to listen to this. He is in it. He's mentioned. He will listen to this one part and nothing else. Yeah, fair point, fair point. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to lie to myself and say that I have three best friends on this server. The actual answer is is that I have one and a half, and I have two-thirds of that one and a half in this call with me, because Ace and 3CP and Reggie are all identical triplets with very similar mannerisms who also periodically will get carried away. So apologies, but there may be times today in which I do actually cut them off, because otherwise this podcast episode will just be the two of them having the conversation. You still look like it's a bad thing. I take massive exception to this. Reggie and 3CP are my slightly less talented brothers from an alternate universe. We've been over this. And I'm still offended by it. 
And for some reason, that fact still doesn't bother me. It really should. It really should. Should it? Should it? Yes. Should it? Three CP. We've had this. You know what? Before. You know what bothers me and many more people. Oh, for God's sake! Where are the fucking audiobook chapters? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. We might as well address the entire reason we drive this thing. Okay. <laughs> So the gist is, and as probably the entirety of the server won't know because I literally only watch the meme channels now. Um, yeah, I am a full-time uni student, college if you're an American hip. <laughs> and basically, I live in a very small flat. And that very small flat is right on the side of a very busy road. And every time I've attempted to record in the past forever, it's been loud as balls. Hmm. um so that interferes with the audio and honestly on a more like substantial level i'm just very busy and that's not a great excuse but that's the one i've got um i don't intend to give up unless ace gets bored of my shit and fires me not that i'm being paid i was about to say i don't recall paying you <laughs> yeah um, and i would very much like to get back on that horse when slash if well when i can uh but it's not going to be for another well, yeah. So, apologies to the five people who actually enjoyed those. You'd be surprised how many views some of those have, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The first, the first AOC one is like six thousand views or something. Oh, that's a nice little ego boost for three CP. <laughs> Needed in this trying time. And to be somewhat fair here, there are audio chapters that have been recorded since the last one was posted. They just mm. haven't been uploaded because they're for perversion of purity. And what I said at the beginning of that was, I'm not going to post any of these until the entirety of book one is recorded. And to be fair to 3CP, he did get about halfway before his life just got super hectic. Yeah, shit. <laughs> shit happened. There's about like 40,000-ish words of recorded content for POP. So, I mean, it's not quite as bad as it looks on the YouTube page. No. Or as bad as you make it out to be whenever you want to throw me under the bus. Yes, but you could have recorded an audiobook chapter three weeks ago, and I would still find a way to throw you under the bus. Mm, that's true. That's kind of what you do. 3CP, to stroke your ego a little bit, the first Ashes of Chaos audiobook has 6.7 thousand views, of which 27 were in the last 48 hours. Huh. Oh, 28. Oh, that's gratifying. Huh. That definitely wasn't me logging on. <laughs> <laughs> No, it actually wasn't. But... Which is funny because, to be just brutally honest, I think of all those ones, Ashes is probably the last one that's really going to get attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because of how, I mean, let's be honest, the scope of that story is a little bit ridiculous. Just a tad. And there's, there's 750,000 words of content there. A lot of the mm. early bit of it being very rough. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm somewhat torn on oh, whether well. I want audiobooks for those early <laughs> chapters, but I mean, if, an, if a lot of people do want it, so I wouldn't stop it from happening or anything, but I mm. just, a lot of that stuff makes me cringe. So personally, I'd really like a perversion of purity audiobook. I would also like my baby to have an audiobook. And right now, Conjoining of Paragons is fucking banging in terms of audience interaction. So that, that one's got to be up there too. So yeah, fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. Yep, he's probably the most manageable of the three. True. I still say that. My stellar American accent should have netted me FOF as well, but, you know. <laughs> oh my god, I wish. I wish more people were on that call. <laughs> For some context, there was a voice call back, I think this was like late fall 2020 on the Discord server. It was a long time yeah. ago, yeah. This was soon after 3CP started recording Four Ashes of Chaos, so I think he'd maybe recorded two, three chapters at this point. So the meme going around was... Pretty sure FOF had only just started. Yeah, it might have even been. Yep, FOF was in its high day. Yeah, FOF was... This was around where I was posting a lot of those chapters for season one over on Patreon. And the joke we were in the server really at that point was, oh, so 3CP, you're a professional voice actor now. <laughs> Which manifested in a couple of people making jokes about an FOF audiobook and a very much not sober 3CP. Hmm. Deciding, I can do a Southern American accent. Like, for the sake of my own self-esteem to point out, I did know it was going to be bad going in. I think that was kind of the point. <laughs> yeah, just making that clear. That audio clip still exists somewhere. It's I amazing it right and now. also horrifying. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, insert clip here. No, I won't do that. <laughs> we won't torture you quite that much. 
mid rolls the clip in the the podcast. Imagine. (laughs) Basically, the main setback is finding somewhere quiet enough to record and finding a time for it, which usually means I set aside time late at night when I'm either at home and it's quiet or. Yeah, basically, no one's around to disturb. And, it, you know, it is setting aside a good couple hours per chapter. Um, so it's not a lack of interest. I enjoy it immensely. Uh, believe me, anything that strokes my ego is always high on my priorities list. It is quite simply just a lack of time with which to do it at the moment. I mean, there are some chapters you def- you actually went through pretty quick. There were other chapters that included Rubius Hagrid that did not go so smoothly. <laughs> Yes, which is definitely not the reason why I pushed for him to die in POP. May you halfway on that. I didn't quite go the death route, but I figured Azkaban was logical. So you didn't have to do his voice for a year when you get back to it. You don't have to do him in second year. I still say it would make sense for him to tragically die in the maze, but sure. sure. <laughs> in the maze of all places. I'm just saying he was one of the referees in canon. Just saying. Who says there's going to be a maze in, in POP 3 cp I'm not sure we've confirmed that. I am, for the sake of him dying in the maze. <laughs> it's decided now. <laughs> that or they do it in the Forbidden Forest and Aragog turns on him. It can be very poignant, very tragic. Real shame. The only time I've seen the Forbidden Forest... I've seen the Forbidden Forest used a couple of times for a Triwizard Tournament. The only time I think I've seen it done well is Salient's... Uh, I think it, the fact is literally just called International Triwizard Tournament. Yes, that was a good... I didn't. I never actually finished that fic, but I got that far in it. I didn't either, but I remember that scene just being a surprisingly good horror scene. Mm. It's funny how those can pop up in otherwise very mundane fics. Yeah, which is funny because like he did some things really well in that story, but you wouldn't have looked and been like, "Oh yeah, he can write horror." Mm. And then they got to the Forbidden Forest scene. It's like, oh, this is actually like this is like properly all right here. <laughs> yeah. This is actually pretty good. It's a weird one. From my experience, horror is either something people are just na- innately good at writing or they can't do a full stop yeah horror is tricky i mean there are some people who just i mean there's some people who just just write horror it's literally all they will write yeah but, i mean there are some people like you know we talk about ice and fire a lot <laughs> i still i will fucking die on this hill one of the best ice and fire chapters is the fight at the fist of the first men and i have never once disagreed with you on that it's not quite as high in my ranking as i think it is for you but it is an amazing chapter. Martin does suspense and horror ridiculously well. Yeah, I, I would in. need to sit down and rank my chapters, but it'd be pretty high up. I think that would be a Not to rank chapters, but why don't we rank POV characters? Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I have been sitting over here waiting for an opportunity. These two knew that I had an activity planned. I did not tell them what it was because I knew eventually the words, A Song of Ice and Fire would come into the conversation. And it just so happens that I'm lucky enough that they also threw out the words ranking. Um, I have a list of every POV character who is in A Song of Ice and Fire. 3CP, odds on that there are at least like five of these where we're both like, wait, these are POV characters? Oh, no, there's going to be a few. It's those one-off ones that, you know, Martin doesn't even give you their names. It's just like, you know, the silent watchman or whatnot. Yeah, I was going to say watchman, yeah. The yeah. list that I got has 24. Okay, that's not so bad. Are we ranking yeah, no. literally best to worst, or are we like putting them in tiers? Uh, think... It is versus. Oh, okay. 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 I mean, three, the, considering the three CP and I have probably watched any solid lore video about the series that exists, I feel like we should be qualified to do this. I would hope so. Yeah. So, so, in other words, this is absolutely an authoritative opinion that holds yep. weight, so I suppose we'll go with it. <laughs> there is no subjectivity here. This is this is objective. Yeah, this is this is definitive. This cannot be argued once this podcast has been completed. <laughs> this is, if not word of God, word of St. Peter, at worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in case any of you want to do this at home, what I did is I went to a wiki of ice and fire dot westrose.org. Glorious website. Went to their list of it is. POV <laughs> character statistics, copied that list into a sheet and made brackets for it, took the list, randomized it so that it wasn't in alphabetical order, and then popped it back into the bracket. Some of these are going to be so unfair, and others are going to be really painful. Oh, yeah. See, the I thing think... is, I, th- I think we're going to agree on a lot of these. Like, I don't think we're mm. going to have that many arguments here. No, I, I think so as well. We tend to agree so, like, on this if... sort of thing. I think when we ranked our top 10 characters, just 
I mean, this was months ago, granted, but I think I think we've had a lot of the same names, even if they were in the slightly wrong order. So. Yeah, there was there was a lot of overlap. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't the same. Yeah, there was there were divergences in placing, but most of the names were the same, like you said. Yeah, it might get it might get dicey near the end when it gets to the final few rounds, but yeah. until then, this should actually go pretty quick. I will warn you, I've already essentially picked who, who will win. I'm not saying I won't be surprised, but I, I am fairly certain I know who I'm going to, you know. See, in the- I said this during the Harry Potter live stream, the, the Harry Potter uh, quiz we did the other night. The problem is, is my mind is very much in a different fandom right now, so this is going to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, mm. as I've mentioned to you guys, but obviously not to any of the audience, I'm going on uh, Song of Ice and Fire Cleanse, YouTube books, everything. Um, before House of the Dragon comes out to see if I have a different viewpoint uh, more separated from the fandom. So yeah, I'm a bit distant from it right now, which will be interesting. <laughs> and I've read about 200,000 words of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere in the past day, so uh, it's <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Well, our first matchup is... Well, are you guys going to go for who had the better POV or who had the best character between characters who had POVs? I feel like you'd kind of balance the two, no? Yeah, I think both are important. So it's it's a matter of waiting it. Okay. Yeah. So between Sansa Stark and Daenerys Targaryen, who wins? Does the Sansa POV include her chapters as Elaine Stone? All of her chapters. Yeah, surely. Okay. Then I personally enjoy Daenerys as a character more, but my vote goes to Sansa. Um, See... The problem with oh, they both have really poor Clash of Kings point of views, don't they? They do. I just, I yeah, those are basically null because they're just not interesting plots. But... I was about to say the thing is, I don't think any character dragged for me more in Clash than Sansa. That's fair, but and honestly, if we were counting Elaine as separate, Daenerys wins hands yeah. down. Yeah, but everything Sansa does after leaving King's Landing is so it is much great. fun for me. It is great. And nothing but, Danny has matches that, in my view. Um, you, you know, obviously disagree. It's interesting. The only thing is, I think, I think Sansa has better point of view chapters at her peak as Elaine Stone with, you know, Littlefinger and mm-hmm. Rob, whatever. But I think Daenerys has more reliably consistent chapters. Like, I, there, are, yeah. there are a couple yeah. in Clash that definitely drag, don't get me wrong. But even in Clash, mm-hmm. she has House of the Undying. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fair. And where Daenerys is good, she's great, don't get me wrong. Both of these are, yeah. you know, good point of views. But one thing I, which I'll talk more on when we get to him, the my enjoyment of the Marine storyline when Barristan takes over as a POV versus my enjoyment oh, when it it's Daenerys up, yeah. is, is so startling. Uh, and obviously I'm biased because it's more recent, so it's fresh in my mind, but I will say I've just enjoyed Sansa so much more as a character in the last couple books than I did Daenerys. So, yeah, that's my standpoint. And I'm a sucker I thought this was going to be really easy, and then we started with this. Yeah. <laughs> like, because my thing was, like, okay, I think Sansa is... I think her progression, especially as Elaine, like you mentioned, has been really good. The only thing is, there's something about stories, and I mentioned this a lot mm. to Athena lately, where certain point of views or certain stories just have a page-turning quality to them, where you're like, shit, I have to keep reading, I have to get back to this point of view mm. problem for me in sansa is i didn't have that at all with sansa really until storm of swords and a good chunk of the way through storm of swords that is fair where i pretty i pretty much had that for daenerys all the way through the series with the exception of some of the stuff in karth in clash of kings okay on that i would say the daenerys sections where she's dealing with the bloody flux almost made me stop reading just because i got really bored um the first time i read it anyway and i think that has slightly tainted my perception and big part of sansa's appeal to me is the first two books whether or not her pov was any i despised her like everything about her narrative she was you know everything i hate in a character and then but it was everything you hated done well exactly yeah point and then it was deliberate on and grows, part. yeah. Which is obviously she is not the best example of character development. We will get to him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, I know who you're on about already. Yeah, anyone who's read the books knows full well what that's going to be, and we will talk about <laughs> that for a while. 
Um, <laughs> but Sansa is a phenomenal example of character growth. And yeah, honestly, rereading her, which I have slightly more benefit than Aeson, I enjoy her more because I know where she's going to be. Yeah. So yeah, that's my two cents. See, this is one of those things that I would really like to revisit after wins, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> because Elaine, for me, I've loved her point of views, but it really depends on where she goes from here, doesn't it? Oh, it, it does, absolutely. There's no arguing with that. Um, I would be willing to seed this one and go with Sansa. I I think my perspective is a little bit skewed because I just her point of view is dragged for me really up until the mid to end of Storm of Swords, which I think in the same way that some of da Daenerys' clash stuff has soured you a bit, Yeah, I think I'm looking at this through the lens of just, oh man, I was so disinterested until this one thing happened. Mm. No, that is fair. Also, it just some of, some of her chapters, especially in Clash, was just, <laughs> uh, it just read as like, oh, Sansa's going to do something and Joffrey's gonna have one of the King's Guard hit her, and then the next chapter Sansa's gonna do something and Joffrey's gonna have one of the Look, King's Guard I'm hit not, her. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. <laughs> it sticks out like a sore thumb, especially when your counterpoint in King's Landing is Tyrion in his best book. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh no, Tyrion and Clash will get to him. <laughs> yeah, we, we will get to that. Um I've been watching season two of the show, actually, and I'm just like, yeah. man, I uh, you forget how good Tyrion is in Clash of Kings. He's yeah, fucking no. phenomenal. Season two is honestly, I would, I will die on the tail. The best uh, adapted book. It's lent to by you know a lot of benefits of it being one of the stronger books. Um, not that any of them are exactly weak. So yeah, um, we're getting off topic. But if you're willing to see it, I'll say Sansa eats this out, but not by yeah. a huge amount. Yeah, no, I'd be willing to see it, Sansa, but I think Daenerys beats most characters in this bracket That's true. yeah no don't this is a really tough one to start yeah it's a bad <laughs> first round matchup i'm both not gonna these lie two could have gotten very far yeah um so oh, yeah, i'm willing to see it and that yeah. that's gonna be an unpopular opinion but yeah you know, yeah no, we'll move. people have already you know stopped listening uh it's a good thing oh, yeah. this doesn't have a comment yeah. section but it will when it goes up on the YouTube page. Oh fuck! Yeah. Okay. Well then, yes, people will hate this. In any case, yeah. Don't don't murder us, okay? Daenerys has peak. Daenerys's character is steady until it's not for a bit, and then it's steady. Sansa is just a well done character through the entire thing, even though yeah. her chapters do drag. My issue with Sansa chapters, I think, are less with. Here's the thing: is mm. I have actual issues with Daenerys as a character. Yeah. And my issues with Sansa chapters have more to do with pacing and just repetitive events and not That's so much fair. with her. Yeah, see, my thing is... I, I will am... say you two have separate brackets. Oh, well then... No, I'd still see it Sansa. Yeah, I'd okay. still go Sansa. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, all I was going to say is, and you both know this full well, I am all about character. That's That's the thing I love. And Sansa works really well as both an unreliable narrator, which is probably my favorite trope in fiction. I was about not... to say... This man wrote a one shot, and it was probably the heaviest one shot I've ever seen in terms of just unreliable narration. <laughs> yeah, no, I I adore it more than life itself at times. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm always going to be a sucker for that, and just the development in general. So, yeah, if we're moving on, that's yeah. the last I will say on that. And I will but, just say yeah. Martin does unreliable narration better than any other fantasy author I've read. Yeah, that's a reason I like him. Yeah, no, he's very good at it. <laughs> I would just like to say that um, I did not rig these brackets at all. That oh, they no. gave you guys some hellacious matchups oh, and some that, that are just jokes in this first round. Yeah, that's the thing is we're gonna spend minutes on some of these, but there are other ones we're just gonna laugh it off, pick a name, move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your next one up is Barristan Selmy. Oh, oh no. Versus, would you guys like to guess? Just no, there's just just don't just don't have it be a Lannister. Please don't be a Lannister. <laughs> Versus Tyrion Lannister. Oh my god, you okay, This well, is bullshit. It, it has to be Tyrion, but I would like it to say be, yeah. that Barristan is one of my favorite POVs. Um See the thing is it has to be Tyrion because we just we honest we don't we have almost nothing from Barristan's point of view. No, exactly. Like, he doesn't even get point of view chapters until dance, right? I know. Um, yeah. dance. No, it is it's like halfway through dance, it's his first. But 
look, he doesn't have enough to challenge Tyrion. Tyrion is you no, know, yeah. phenomenal. His this is just... Arc and Kings is, if not my favorite, one of my absolute favorite of any character. And he yeah. obviously wins. We can talk more on that when he's up yeah. against an actual contender. Uh, I would just like to give Barristan some pity points. <laughs> because... Yeah, no, Barristan. <laughs> Barristan is one of my absolute favorite characters. We just yeah. don't have enough from this point yeah. of view. Like we're comparing He's had like four chapters. I think it's, I was gonna yep, say, we're four. comparing like four chapters from Barristan, and then and then if we're counting the Winds of Winter sample chapters, mm. we're comparing. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like we're comparing four, and then a Winds of Winter sample chapter against just okay. Okay, Tyrion wasn't in Feast, but four consistent yeah. books of Tyrion. I mean, it just he can't be. Reason... Peter Dinklage was top billed for consecutive seasons yeah. of the show. Yeah. Tyrion with Jon and Daenerys are, you know, the three most used points of view. And yeah. you, you can't top that with four chapters, no matter how great they are and how much they say the I mean, storyline for me. And I mean, I'm not taking this into account, but Martin, George Martin has said several times Tyrion is his favorite character. And that yeah. shows in the writing of yeah, Tyrion. You can he, absolutely. Yeah, his attention to just internal details with Tyrion is worth his internal thoughts and his quips back, and it is, it is just all so precise and well done. Yeah, no, it's it's excellent. I'm I'm seething for Barristan though. I'm yeah. seething that Barristan sell me got put up against could have been that in the first hit, round. It got surprisingly well, but yeah, uh, he would have gone. That's a real shame. Three CP and I than anyone would have expected if he wasn't against Tyrion yeah. fucking Lannister. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, it's going to be a shame because I bet you the next, or, you know, a couple brackets down, it's going to be two characters we think kind of shite. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, that's a real shame. And I feel bad now. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm actually actually seething. I hope my mic didn't peak when I fucking screamed it at my mic. (laughs) So, next up, we have Eddard Stark versus Samuel Tarly. Oh. It's... Hmm. So the problem is... See, my impulse was to stay Ned, but... See, the my the problem is, right, we don't really see all that much character development from Ned, because he kind of mm. is. Well, Ned's essentially a character who has completed a story, yeah, yeah, and has had the misfortune that the rest of the world had more of a story to tell. Yeah. But you could give Eddard Stark an exceptional character arc if you started a story a little bit before his fostering in the Vale and ended it with the Greyjoy Rebellion, that would be hell, even, an amazing hell, outgrowth of a character. Hell, even start and Brandon go... Like, even start when, um, yeah, Brandon goes south. Yeah, I mean, the myriad of fanfics can attest to how compelling that is as an arc for a character. But that does mean that by the time Game of Thrones starts, he's a grown man who has, you know, he has completed his growth as a human yeah. being. He knows... Is what he believes in, and honestly, the thing that kills him is the fact that he's not a flexible person. Exactly. I was about to say the fact, yeah, and that what, but like narratively, he's an amazing character. I was about to say to play devil's advocate, we were talking about how Tyrion and Clash is great and is one of our favorite single POV characters in a like in a specific book. I mm. love reading Ned in Game of Thrones. You can't not Ned. I mean. There's a reason everyone loves him as a character, despite the fact, you know, he's gone in the first book. His POV is amazing, and he's one of the best examples of a static character. Yeah. Because he doesn't need to be this changing, evolving character, because he is a... The bitch dies. For lack of a better metaphor. He's a block of stone in the middle of a river, you know, things are changing around him, and that's where you draw the complexity, that's where you draw the interest. Sam, on the other hand, because we haven't really talked about him, has a very fun point of view. He has a very interesting and layered point of view. I would give it to Ned, though. See? Because he's a huge part of what drew people to this yeah. series in the first place. See, this is an interesting one because Sam is a better traditional character arc than Ned. Especially because of, of all the... I don't know if you want to call him a main character, but of all the... If all the central point of view care of all the important point of view characters in the story, I would argue that there aren't many who go through as stark. See what I did there? A transformation <laughs> oh, as Samuel Tarley. No, that's very true. But I mean, it's practically signposted. He introduces himself yeah. as a craven. And I mean, this is the same thing we were saying about Sansa and 
Daenerys and clashes. I really like Sam and Feast for Crows, and he has some incredible chapters. Mm. Some of his stuff with Maester Aemon is yeah. incredible. There are some anything with Maester Aemon on screen is amazing. Yeah, yeah, there are some chapters for me, and this is kind of a theme with a few characters in Feast for Crows for me, to be honest. Yeah, but there are some chapters with Sam that not necessarily through the fault of his character, but they do drag, and I don't think I ever felt that with Ned. But much smaller no, sample I size, I... right? So. Yeah, it's. I think Ned's ten chapters. Um, yeah, Athena can probably correct me if I'm wrong on that. Fifteen. And oh wow, more fifteen, than really? Wow. Um, yeah, I was way off. But yeah, no, I I really enjoy Sam as a POV. I always, you know, there are certain characters that I just light up when I turn the page and I see that it's them next. Yeah, Sam is one of them. Sam has but ten at the chapters, same time. whereas Ned has fifteen. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Sam really only gets point of views in Storm of Swords and Feast for Crows. Yeah. yeah, Sam just whether or not he's a better written character is debatable. He's not a better viewpoint because Ned's Ned's is quintessential everything that Martin was trying to do with his first book. It all wrapped around this. Even the stuff with John, which is you know as removed as possible, hinges on John finding out about Ned's arrest. Everything, to, yeah. a lot of Daenerys's plotline hinges on the decision by Robert to send the assassin. Ned is the linchpin of the entire first book, and I don't think you can overlook that. Plus, he's got Littlefinger, and, you know, I love Littlefinger. Okay, it's been five minutes. Ace, what is your choice? Uh, Samwell's a better traditional character, but in terms of viewpoint, just off of sheer enjoyment, I've got to go Ned. But with an honorable yep. mention, because Sam has the point of view at the fist of the first men. <laughs> I'm going to keep mentioning Let's that be honest, chapter that's because the that's main brilliant. reason you pushed that as hard as you did. I mean, the other thing with Sam is I act, I'm, he's one of the characters I'm most looking forward to in Winds of Winter, so that, might have been, that made it a little bit harder for me. Yeah, so, I mean, no, he's going to be really interesting. Him just though. popping up beside a faceless man is going to be pretty fun, but you know. Okay. Oh, um, um, we should have mentioned this a long time yeah. ago. Uh, spoiler alert, A Song of Ice and Fire, Game I'll of Thrones. I'll be inserting a thing before before <laughs> yeah, okay, the cool, even starts. Yeah, that's, I, also plan on tit- I also plan on it being titled Audiobooks in a Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. fair. Yeah, good, because I'm not good at censoring myself on this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a lost cause from the beginning. This could be long, but you know, we'll yeah. work it. Your next matchup yeah, right. is yeah. Melisandre and Cersei Lannister. Oh, it's Cersei. I, I like Melisandre. Yeah, I actually do really like Melisandre, but we've had one point. Yeah, chapter. she's really interesting. Yeah, no. Melisandre is really interesting. She's really fun, but it's Cersei. Like, yeah. There's not much to say. She has... Honestly, just it's unfair to go against any of the Lannister siblings. Yeah. Because they are such oh, phenomenal character arcs. I mean, I will wax lyrical. There's a reason that Martin's spoken about in terms of maybe being the best fantasy author of all time in terms of writing villains. And I mean, and it, that family is why. Yeah. <laughs> It's not Bruce Bolton. Um, yeah, <laughs> no. uh, right. The Lannisters are incredible, and it's, it's deeply, you know, mysterious and intriguing as everything that comes up from Melisandre's point of view mm-hmm. is. You don't top this this descent into insanity yeah, no. that is so beautifully captured by Cersei. And again, we have one Melisandre chapter, don't we? It's just the one in Storm of Swords, isn't it? Yeah, but it's so interesting. Oh, no, it's really good, but it's the same argument with Barristan versus Tyrion, where it's like, okay, but yeah. you're comparing this against the, the character who carried Feast for Crows in a lot of ways. There was some great stuff that there wasn't Cersei, yeah. but she made up so much mm-hmm. of that book. Yeah, no, I would just say Melisandre's chapter works amazing in stepping up the mystical yeah. side of things. Cersei's works in the it is the political side of things for the last two books in a big way. I mean, Melisandre probably is um, the best one-off point of view chapter that I can think of. I would, yeah, I can't, yeah, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone I mean, that, that may, pops maybe back. Maybe so, yeah. get disputed later in this, but I think Melisandre is the best one-off point of view that I can think of. And she mm. is one of my favorite characters from other people's perspectives. I really like what Martin yeah. does with the air of mystery around her. Everything's so well done. Absolutely. I also think we're going to get more of her in wins with the whole, you know, resurrecting John thing, which should be fun, but it just she she just yeah. doesn't beat Cersei Lannister. No, because you you can't top Cersei no. with one chapter, no, no matter how good. It's it not is. possible. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. it could be my favorite chapter of the entire series. It wouldn't matter. 
Okay. No. Your next matchup, and feel free to correct me if I mess up saying the name because it has an R. In- oh dear. Uh oh. This might upset me. Uh, Ariane Martel and Quentin Martel. Oh, Ariane, Ariane Martel and Quentin Martel. Oh. That's fun, but yeah, it, it's just oh, Ariane. Yeah, Ariane. Ariane. Not even close. Quentin, and yeah, spoilers, Quentin literally exists to die. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He, Ariane, he exists well, literally. So much fun. Yeah. Quentin literally exists simply to personify Never Tickle a Sleeping Dragon. And yeah. That, that, he, he is the Hogwarts motto. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what he does. And I don't dislike his chapters, but honestly, nothing from Quentin's perspective jumps out at me. It, it, it does. I think the most telling thing is when I heard Ariane Martel, I immediately recalled everything that happened. Well, not everything, but, you know, the broad strokes of everything that happens in the yeah. chapters. When I think of Quentin, I have a whole load of uh, a flat line. I have to think about it, yeah. Yeah, this flat line that I have to force through, plus, you know, he gets burned by a dragon. That's it. Yeah, uh, and even that is better relayed to us, in my opinion, by Barristan's ruminations yes. on it than Quentin's actual point of view. Question: See, Quentin is the definition of a character who exists to further other people's arcs. Yeah, big time. Yes, if also know. Ariane and Aegon is going to be fun. Remind yeah. me who the Martells are. Oh, fucking hell. Dawn. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, Dawn. Yep, there we go. They're the ruling family yeah. of Dawn. Your yeah. next matchup the... mm. is Ares Oakheart and Aaron Greyjoy. God, I forgot Ares had the point of view <laughs> in Feast Run. Yeah. I, okay, I, it's another, I, I like Ares, but I like Ares, but I mean, it's Aaron. Okay. I mean, it's Aaron either way, but. Because this is going to be a thing for me going forward. Are we counting the Forsaken? I am. I am going to. Because okay. Otherwise, otherwise, he's only got one. Yeah. Um, and the Forsaken is... The Forsaken is a top um, five chapter in the series. It's not out yet. It's yeah. Winds of Win- for, okay. He actually has three chapters, counting the Winds of Winter. For anyone who doesn't know what we're on about, um, the Forsaken is one of the chapters George has released as an early Winds of Winter preview chapter, and it features Aaron Grager, and it is just incredible. You can find it online, and I would I would truly recommend to anyone who's read the series if they haven't already seen it. I'm sure they have. Oh but yeah, it's it's so good. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, it it does horror. Just oh my god. <laughs> it's you know it's it's terrifying. It's visceral. It's deeply unsettling in a way that not a lot of other stuff is. And it, it's just masterfully written start to finish. And Ares, he's a nice guy. He means well. He doesn't come close. No, and I mean, like, the argument could be made for the Forsaken. They're like, oh, it's more Euron's chap. But like, oh my god, just come on. Yeah, no. Mm. But I think, and yes, it is more Euron's chapter, but it's made all the more powerful by the fact that Aaron has the best conception of Euron yeah. as a person of anyone alive that could be a POV outside of, you know, being your own. That chapter cannot be more impactful from any other character's perspective. It just can't be. No. Aaron is simultaneously Euron's greatest victim. He's a representation of everything Euron's against and rising above. He's, yeah, you know, those two characters are vital facets of each other. So I also really enjoyed what Martin did with the idea of Aaron's faith in that chapter. The way he sort of played with Mm -hmm. it and Twisted it a little yeah. bit and made him qu- the way he made himself question. It was, yeah, it, it was the best I've ever seen any character in that position done and juggled. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, he's a sleeper for this. He could go further than some people expect. Yeah, and I mean, we could you know just fanboy over this chapter for a while just to make sure make it clear that we're not just basing it on a no, know, no, 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 no. He's great in dark. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know, he doesn't have a ton to do, but he's really interesting. I always love religious fanatics uh, point of view because, you know, it's really fun to see how different authors can tackle how they justify it themselves, all those little minutiae. And there's just look, Aris is nice, but nothing he does stands out. No, and he has no great too, because yeah. we it's actually really easy to see how he makes the conclusions he does through mm-hmm. his character. And also He's underrated in terms of importance because without him, the whole Kingsmooth thing never happens. Yeah. Okay. That just yeah, sort of gets sure. ignored with him. Okay. 
Mm. No, it's a very important thing. So yeah, that wrong. Yeah. You guys had four and a half minutes on that one. Yeah. If you guys hit five minutes, I'm just going to start cutting you guys off. Just just think though, Athena. Think of all like the easy YouTube clips <laughs> we can get out of this and just click and just go, Daenerys Targaryen versus Sansa Stark. <laughs> no context. Just do that as the title. You can bang. Okay. He's not wrong. Your next matchup is Theon Greyjoy and John Cunnington. Oh. It's Theon. Yeah. No, it's Theon. <sighs> It's interesting when you start yeah, when you first think yeah. about it. But and again, John Con is a fun point of view. I, I despise yeah, him as a person. He's a fun character to read. Theon has I actually think I would say the second most interesting character arc. Oh me. interesting. Just overall, the entire series. I really and I was surprised actually on my most recent reread how much I enjoyed seeing him because I'm I'm not alone in saying I dis buys Theon when he yeah. first oh yeah he's you a know. festival human you're meant to you're meant to he's a profoundly horrible person yeah. and you know he's made to you want to reach into the book and punch him he's no Joffrey but he's you know he's entitled he's arrogant he's one he's of the just... next biggest ones though for that yeah yeah he really is and then he is broken as a human being he's just torn apart and then he starts to build himself again and I love reading that. Every single chapter Theon has in dance, I am, you know, pouring through. His dance chapters are really fun. Yeah. It's one of my favorite uh, arcs in any of the books. So, yeah. Um, Some of his Reek stuff does drag a little bit. Yeah, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. But I won't dispute it that. Just, just because of just how almost comically repetitive it is. But mm. looking at the character arc as a whole is, it, yeah, it just it just is masterful. I, I'm willing to put up with the Reek stuff dragging because it sets up what comes next, and that is you know exceptional writing. Yeah, I have some problems with how Theon was done that will probably mm. come up when we have more competitive matchups. But yeah, fair yeah I, I I mean he 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 does beat John Cunnington. I think Cunnington's a really underrated character, but he does. He oh, does. he is. He is. Connington okay. is very interesting. But, yeah. Yeah. Next up we don't is... Have all <laughs> Asha Greyjoy versus Davos. Oh, Davos. Yeah, it's Davos. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lannister. <laughs> oh. <laughs> versus Bran Stark. Bye, Bran. I, I, I like yeah, Bran. Yeah. I really yeah. like Bran. Look, Bran is fun. He's mystical. He's interesting. It's Jamie. Yeah, which this actually sucks because Bran honestly beats almost anyone on this list for me. Bran, but... Bran does well. Bran's, you know, if we were doing it as a tier list, Bran is IA possibly S tier. Oh, yeah. Jamie. Yeah, no, Bran is. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's easily the best of the Starks. I like Sansa, but. Mm. Yeah, no, there's, you don't top Bran unless, <laughs> unless you're a Lannister, which unfortunately is what he got. <sighs> And I mean, yeah, we'll we'll rave about Jamie later. That could be its own podcast. Yeah, we but, can. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could spend hours just talking about slight him. spoilers for this. But I've in one of my earlier Q and As, I quite literally said Jamie was the, the best character arc I've ever seen done in fantasy. So I mean, I think you guys can see where this is going. It's Jamie Lannister. Yeah, I physically couldn't disagree with that. <laughs> I, I mean, anyone who's spoken to me for any length of time on this topic knows how hard I shield for Jamie's character development. So. Yeah, <laughs> I might as well be sponsored by the guy. I'm sorry, Bran. You sh you should have gone far. Yeah, <laughs> it's a real tragedy that. Okay, next up is Arya Hota and Arya Stark. Okay, I want to say Arya Hota because I just don't enjoy Arya, but it is Arya. <laughs> just for the <laughs> and also yeah, and also I don't want to be stabbed. Yeah, no, it, it it's Arya. There there is Arya. Fun. Here, so. Aria's fun, but I mean, Aria is a day one, very vital part of this story. So I mean, yeah, this one is it's Aria. <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, there's not much to say. Here. Aside from the hardcores like us, uh, there are going to be people who listen to this who have read the books who don't remember who that is. I don't know who mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, exactly. There's Aria a reason wins. why I'm just letting them talk. Yeah, no, Aria wins. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next up, Brienne of Tarth versus. Catelyn Stark. <laughs> for the for some context, 
three CP and I have had some legendary rants about Catelyn's chapters. But I actually think she's a good, a very well written character. I just think some of her yeah. chapters drag like no one else's. Yeah. Is- it um okay. Martin doesn't really write bad characters. Kathleen, no, he really doesn't. Everything about Kathleen is good. She's, you know, well, no. Everything about Kathleen as a character is good. You know, she's yeah. really well written. She's very well fleshed out. Her motivations make sense even when you disagree with them. But Jesus Christ, some of her chapters. Yeah, I mean, the one they that I just... always come back to is in the chapter where she is going up to the area in Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's just, okay, there's some lovely imagery in that chapter, and her character's done well. It's just, you have to really sift through some stuff yeah. there. No, I am, I remember quite vividly, actually, and this is going to sound very privileged, white guy. On one of my more, on, actually not that long ago, uh, a reread, I was on a skiing holiday, um, hence the privileged white guy comment, and I straight up, <laughs> the eerie chapter... <sighs> took me longer to get through it took me a good i think two days because i just kept not yeah. wanting to read it whereas i finished uh a game of thrones uh which i was about a quarter of the way through a clash of kings and half of the storm of swords in that same week and yeah i, I think, mean yeah like i i deep dive into books i don't do books halfway i'll be honest i skipped the airy chapter on my life okay no that's not true i didn't skip it but I was listening to audio at the time, and I just I jacked the audible narration up to the fastest for the Harry chapter. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I mean, and, you uh, know, and this is while listening to, to Roy DeTrace, who's one of my favorite narrators ever. Yeah, that's not to say there aren't good moments like uh, Tyrion's trial by combat. Wait, no, yeah. that's a Tyrion point of view, isn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, Never mind. My point is irrelevant. But <laughs> Catelyn does have some good chapters around that. Yeah. No, also, she does. She absolutely does. And Catelyn's chapters yeah. in Renly's camp are really fun. Yeah, I was about to say in Kings before she gets back to Rob, she's really good. Yeah, um, everything we learn about Renly and Stannis and Stannis from her point of view is fun. It's engaging. I enjoyed that a lot. She's just really weighed down by a lot of her Game of Thrones. Yeah, she also and, does mean, have the yeah. Jamie chapter at the end of Clash. <laughs> <laughs> and she has, you know, the dubious honor of being the POV for the Red Wedding. Yeah. Um, which is among the things people think of first for this series. It is. So, sorry, she was against Brienne, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we sort of just focused on Catelyn there. Um, I do think Cat takes this as much as some of her stuff oh, pains me. Tough. There's Brienne has a lot going for her, don't get me wrong. She's a great character she's also so interesting just as a concept which you know everyone can agree with just this idea of this complete out outlier of westerosi society and i love a lot of what she does at the same time she doesn't have a chapter that jumps out at me she's just sort of good just reliably good but not great i think think that's the first one we're going to differ on Really? My my issue with Catelyn that knocks her down for me is though her character arc as looking at it as a whole is done really well and you mentioned her, yes, her actions are all justified. I can see why she came to them. There are some moments with Catelyn that are caricature ish mm. in the sense that some of Catelyn's reactions to me read almost over-exaggerated in the sense that, and this is very odd for Martin because it almost never happens. Mm-hmm. But there are some Catelyn choice, and I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Honestly, her just sheer closed mindedness in regards to Tyrion. That I'm willing to give, to be honest. Which is funny because she preaches open mindedness to Rob, and I get it. I get being a hypocrite doesn't make you a bad character. I do understand. It's more just that some of her decisions don't necessarily match up with her own internal monologue. That's fair. I'm, and I actually do think Brian has done really well. I still hate how you pronounce that, but okay. I'm going Brian simply off of audiobooks. I'm giving it to Detrace. I know. Detrace. <laughs> I know. It's fine. I don't have a huge start. I'm not going to die on this hill. So I wouldn't either, I will, to be honest. No. I'd go, I am but I would. to give it to Brian because I, yeah. we've said most of what we're going to say about Kathleen. We can say more oh, about yeah. Brian. 
from a purely yeah. pragmatic standpoint, let's go with her so that she can be more interesting in the next round. Okay. Yeah. So you're both going with Brian. Yep. Your last matchup from a first round. Christ, we're only in the first round okay. still. <laughs> yeah. Can you guess the two names based off of everyone else you've heard? Um, John Snow. Uh, mm-hmm. One has to be John. Yeah. Um, the problem okay. is at this point is I'm trying to remember who we've done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they've left off quite a few point of views then because there are a lot. They've of left all of the one off. Mentioned. Yeah. Except for yeah. Alexandra. Like poor Pate, the yeah. big boy. Yeah. Yeah, but she's Alexandra. kind of an important one off. Um, uh, Vic- Victorian, yep. isn't it? Oh shit! Yeah, it's Victorian. Yeah. Yep, John Snow versus Victorian. Well, it's John. I mean, it's John. I actually really I like, like Victorian. Yeah, but it's no. John. <laughs> Victorian has been one of my favorite parts of. Um, is he dance or feet? He's dance, yep, right? He's dance. Yeah. Um, yeah, dance. Yeah, no. Victorian has been one of my favorite parts of dance, and I mean, everything he's doing right now is you know setting up for some really fun stuff. But you can't not pick John in this circumstance. You know, it's. I mean, yeah. It's it's putting a very a very fun, very interesting very late addition against someone who's been there from the start and I mean really is this is carrying it, the overarching plot line. This is Barristan and Daenerys all over again. Yeah. I mean um, yeah, it's John Snow. It's it's John. I wish it wasn't, but it well no I don't wish yeah. it wasn't, but it is. Okay. On to round two. This time I We got be... through a round. <laughs> we got through a we're, round. We're, I might okay. actually go to bed before the sun rises. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say. Okay. First up, Sansa versus Tyrion. This is cruel, but it is Tyrion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything we had to say with regards to Sansa's flaws has kind just of been said. Apply. And it's, yeah. I think the most telling thing is a lot of our criticisms with Sansa in Clash, which is by far Tyrion's strongest book. Yeah. And they're even more damning when their POVs are in the same place and they regularly interact with each other during them. And it just says so much about... I mean, I'm not sure why I'm even arguing this as strongly as I am, because we both yeah, know it's no. Terry, and everyone knows it's Yeah, Terry. no, it's... I, actually, it's, yeah, I yeah. like Sansa, but, I mean, Sansa doesn't come into her own until the end of Storm of Swords. But by the yeah. time Sansa comes into her own, Tyrion is out of King's Landing, okay? <laughs> like, Yeah, that's come the on. thing. Tyrion, you know... And Tyrion doesn't, you know, he does decrease slightly, but he's by no means bad. Yeah, no, Clash Whereas, is sort of his peak so far, but I mean, he has some really yeah. fun stuff in Storm of Swords yeah. and a couple of, and like his dance am, chapter with Illyrio is great. Yeah. I want to save some of my biggest statements on Tyrion for a real matchup, but I would, I yeah. would just say that there's no yeah. real competition here. No. Okay, next up is We Ned. are going to get called Lannister fanboys so hard in these comments. We are, oh, yeah. though. Just <laughs> it's going to be so brutal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your next matchup is Ned versus Cersei. Ooh, the now that now one, you're talking about. Now yeah. this is what we're talking about. This is what I'm here for. Wow, okay. You only have five minutes. Oh, yeah, shit. Fine. This, um, this is the first properly hard one, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <sighs> the thing is, they are amazingly similar, yet so different at the same time. Yeah. I think this one is just going to come down to I think everything we said about Ned in book one about him being this establishing character and the driving force for the series and how so many people's actions spiral off of his choices the problem is that same argument applies to Cersei in that first book and she's around for four more the thing is you can make the argument she's not a POV then but no but I think some of her yeah hinges on Cersei oh feast Um, she her work in Feast for Crows, I will argue, is comparable to Tyrion's in Clash of Kings. I would agree. Her, and this is, a, I'm, not, I'm actually not sure how out there this is an opinion, but her small council meetings, just the way she thinks about every single person there, and how wrong we know she is, yeah. I never stop enjoying. Is so, one of those your favorite chapter in Feast? Yes. Yes, it yeah. is. I couldn't tell you specifically off the top of my head. It's the one where Orain is playing her like a fucking fiddle, and all yeah. she's thinking about is how, oh, he's basically Rhaegar. I should sleep with him. <laughs> and yeah. it's just magnificent. 
And it's it's some of Martin's best because he so well conveys that she's being played, that, you know, she's completely in the wrong. And yet her narration never breaks to say, of course, she no. didn't know that she was wrong. Oh, no, it's so um, interesting. It's yeah, it's amazing. It's, you know, it's my it's my obsessive love for unreliable narration all over again. But I, I have it's to the, to Cersei. But it might be the best unreliable narration the genre has ever seen. Yeah. It, I'm I'm not gonna die on that hill. There are some series no. I haven't read, but like, yeah, of course, of course, you know. There. But yeah, no, I've I've got to give it to Cersei. Yeah, I've got to give it to it's Cersei. If Ned was around like longer. Ned. Yeah, yeah, nothing against Ned, but um, it's like we said, Ned is who has completed his story. Yeah, and Cersei's is really just beginning. Cersei's is this beautiful story of decline. Yeah, and yeah, so uh, yeah, we agree. More could be said, but it doesn't need to. Yeah, pretty much. We don't need this three hours long. No. Okay, next up is Ariane and Aaron. Ooh. This is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Great joy, to clarify. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm inclined to give this to Aaron. Yeah, that's, this is unfortunate for me because everything I said about Aaron last round still holds true yeah we didn't have quite as much time to talk about ariane but she has some really great stuff i love her pov yeah it's i love good. how i love how entitled she is i love just the way her brain works the way anytime she's think and we talked about unreliable narration before and how yeah. martin is incredible at not writing perfect characters anytime she's mm. thinking about quentin just yeah chef's kiss yeah Honestly, He's... anything about her family in general, because her yeah. interactions with Duran, with Doran, are yeah, they're also great. Are beautiful. Um, the thing, I think her best work is going to be Winds of Winter. Is the thing. I agree. I a lot of her stuff up to this point has been setting up for her and Aegon to interact. Yeah, and that's going to be amazing. So if we did this, I don't know, in fifty years' time, when we actually have Winds of Winter, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think our answers could change. But at the same time, I think, unless he dies, which is a distinct possibility, I think Aaron's going to have some really interesting chapters as well. Oh, you don't think he's going to die after the first hit? Oh, interesting. No, I think he might get one more. Oh, interesting. I think he's. I think that's the last we see him. I think he's dead. Yeah, that's fair. That's a distinct possibility. I uh, would not because be surprised I, I at think all. He, I think he's... I think the sacrifice of a brother is required in whatever Euron's doing, or a, a meaningful sacrifice like that is required. And yeah, I know he has. I think that I couldn't say why. My assumption has always been that the sacrifice or some ritual, whatever Euron does, is going to be an Aaron POV. Whatever <laughs> Euron does. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, God fucking knows. It could be a Kraken, it could be a Kraken. <laughs> I've always been in the sense that I'm not actually sure we see it on screen. I think we might see the after effects of it. That's also very much possible. I think, yeah, in any case, this is kind of moved. But, um, yeah. Ariane will I mean, we could do an entire no matter what video happens, on the yeah. of winter predictions. Yeah. No, no matter what happens, Aaron will be lucky to survive a quarter yeah. of the way into that book. Ariane, okay, so hand, you, you, you guys got it. You, you guys got an extra minute because I was figuring out my dinner, which will be sushi. Um, <laughs> so are we yeah. going with Ariane or Ariane? Yeah, we're, we're going Aaron. with Aaron. Okay. Ariane is potential. Aaron, but I think my answer changes after wins. Yeah. Okay. Theon or Davos? Everything Fuck. I've said still holds. No, I... I think it is Theon. Everything I've said about Theon holds. But god damn do I want Davos to win this. I was say, the thing is, it's another one, isn't it? Where it's Theon, but yeah. ask me after Winds of Winter, because we're going to get yeah. Davos and Rickon. We're going to get Skagos, which yeah, I'm yeah, unreasonably yeah. excited for. I mean, I have, we haven't, we've sort of touched on this basically every time I mention Littlefinger, but there are certain characters who don't have POVs who are represented in specific POVs, and that does heighten that POV, and Wyman Manderley is one of those characters. Yeah, Wyman's great. But at the same time, you do get him and Theon. I also get some great Melisandre stuff through him. That's true. So Davos, God, Davos is great. And I'm so excited for his wind stuff. But at the same time, Theon has been a more, 
Well, he also has a lot to look forward to in wins. And he is probably the better straightforward POV. Davos yeah. is more interesting as a reflection on the characters around him, which isn't an indictment on him at all. No, he's great. No, 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 no. But he's the eyes through which we see Stannis, through which we see Melisandre, through which we see Selyse, Shireen, fucking Alistair Florent, that mad lad. Um, <laughs> whereas Theon is You're forgetting about much... the biggest of Chad's 3CP. Oh. How could you ever forget about Edric Storm? Of course. Of course, absolutely. There's something, something's going to happen with that kid at some point. Oh, big time. Yeah, it's going to be horrifying. Um, Wouldn't be surprised if he stumbles into Euron and just gets thrown in the front of a ship or something. <laughs> would not be. You know, he eventually rocks up at the end of the series and he's just got like the entire yeah. room of the ship. Just has just a new patch Yeah. Um, the God, thing with yeah. Davos for me, and this is, I think, a pretty good reflection for this and how I judge this, of their mm-hmm. point of views and wins, uh, though I am technically looking forward to Davos as more, it has less to do with Davos and more to do with the environment around him. Or Theon's the exact opposite. Though the environment around him is going to be fun and wins, I think that story is going to be told better from other people's perspectives. But I'm agree. really interesting to see what his character does. So just yeah. on that assessment and side to side alone, I think I have to go Theon. Yeah, that's my thing. I will always be character above everything. And Theon is has the more compelling yeah. character. Okay. Uh, so you guys are both going Theon. Yep. Yep. Okay. Next up is Jamie or Arya. It's Jamie. Oh, that's gonna piss some people off. <laughs> it's Jamie, okay, but all people I, are gonna be fucking livid. Yeah, I I have always understood I'm in the minority when it comes to my opinions on Arya. And I would like to make it very clear before people start firing through my windows. I like <sighs> Arya. I like her POV. I like her character. I'm kind of sick of the house in black and white. Has yeah. it even been oh, yeah. that long? I didn't enjoy Cat of the Canals. I liked what it could potentially set up fine. And I will be the first to admit I'm probably a bit soured by how the TV show handled it, which is unfair, but I'm not an objective person. But Arya, after she leaves Westeros for me, has a major decrease in quality. Jamie does nothing but improve. Yeah, I mean, just compare their chapters in Feast for Crows. Yeah. Like, um, uh, and I know that isn't more. necessarily the metric, but... Yeah, Arya's had more, and she's, you know, she's been around longer. She's had a more complete journey, in a sense. But Jamie is character development. Yeah, and like he, yeah, I can say a lot, and I'm desperately trying to save it. But Arya has some wonderful stuff in Clash of Kings, and honestly, does. her stuff in Storm of Swords is also like one of my favorite dynamics we've seen in the entire series is her and Sandor. I love that exactly. dynamic so 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 much. Yeah, and you I and everyone else. And I don't think I mind her stuff in bravos as much as you do mm-hmm. but it does get very repetitive doesn't it it does and um, same with arias feast for crows for aria was it wasn't about what was happening with her it was about where she's going to go jamie is the exact opposite his the most recent chapters in which we've seen jamie lannister are about this is how jamie has changed after the death of Tywin after the loss of his hand, after his relationship with Brian, after so many things I could just keep listing and listing and listing and listing. Yeah. I really like Arya. I she's not as high on my list as she is for a lot of people either, but she'd be higher on mine than she'd be on yours. But it's yeah, that's definite. it's Jamie Lannister. It is. And we're so screwed on the front of people not thinking we're complete Lannister. Oh Wankers, yeah, no. But- I mean, our final is they're just going to be Lannisters. <laughs> they actually won't. They have might not have figured that out yet. Um, so... Hey man, if Varys was a point of view character, he'd go damn far. <laughs> yeah, He'd have a good shot at winning for me. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Your guys' last matchup in the second round is going to be Brian and John. It is John. It, it's John. Um, again, I, I, I like Brian. Brian. Yeah. She has her stuff with Jamie is incredible. And mm-hmm. honestly, 
I love how we see we never are once told what kind of person Bright. A lot the authors fall into this a lot where it's mm. um Ned Stark was a stoic man who with the, these values and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It is shoved down our throat with Ned, and this is not a knock on Ned because he's only around for one book, so you have to get that message across. It is shoved yep. down our throat by so many characters in Game of Thrones that Ned is stern and honorable and rigid and all of this stuff. We are never once told by anybody or a narrator what kind of person Brian is, yet we could all do a character analysis on her simply by the way she interacts with Jamie and how those interactions evolve over time. That is masterful. Yeah. She's also just a very fresh type of point yeah. of view. She is so different in her outlook, in the way she's presented than anyone else. And it's, you know, it's this marked change, no matter what, you know, if you're reading it, well, how you're reading it, when you switch from one point of view to three ends, it's a shift. And obviously, oh, yeah. you know, the same goes for every single character. But for her, it's so noticeable. And that's really fun to have. She has a very distinct narr- narrative voice. Even in, that's the even in her internal monologues, everything is, you could pick her out from a line. No problem. I could read. Yeah. And it doesn't, not dialogue. I'm not even talking dialogue. Let's take. 10 paragraphs, all of them from a major point of view character, internal monologuing and nothing descriptive of where they are. I could pick hers out every time. Yeah, I agree. Um, which <sighs> However, makes her great. But... She is against one of the central point of views of the entire story. And a yeah. man we have literally watched grow from a boy in Winterfell to, I mean, the, the Lord, Lord Commander, Commander of the Night's, Night's Watch. Watch. Like, it's yeah. a tough one. And I know a lot of people sour on John because of how he's portrayed in the show. Most of his yeah. issues in the show don't exist in the books, at least no. not yet. So you have to remove that. Yeah. In the books, John is this wonderful subversion of that classic hero archetype. Yeah. And I love his later chapters for the oh way God. he just, he could have been a bit like Rob. No shade on Rob. That's what he's meant to be. He could have been this sort of, you know, straightforward pure good lawful you know blah blah he's not he's learning politics he's being underhanded he's comprehending that this is how the world works and that's what sets him apart brilliantly from ned and from rob oh yeah 100 percent. he is yeah of the male starks the biggest weakness of both rob and ned is their stubbornness got them killed john yeah. is the one who's a willing i mean this man after centuries and millennia of propaganda about the wildlings is open-minded enough to embrace that culture and even allow them pat like that alone put ned or put rob in his place and honor aside do can you honestly tell me they are open-minded enough to make that choice no you you really can't to be honest yeah no i love brian but it's john yeah. snow yeah you you can't argue otherwise Okay, and we are on to round two. Semifinals, I believe. Yeah, or round three. Yep, semifinals, and then we will have a three-way decision for the final round. Oh, boy. You guys are not going to like this first pair up. Nope, no, we're not. No, yeah. Can you figure out who it is based off of history? It's Tyrion and Jamie, isn't it? Tyrion and Cersei. Oh, Cersei, okay. Yeah, Jamie's a bit later. Um, uh, oh, it's John and Jamie. That's enough. Uh, um, oh God, <clears throat> um, is it crazy that I'm considering giving this to Cersei? No, that's no problem, sir. I think but when this first came up, I was about to be like, oh, it has to be Tyrion, right? And then I started thinking about it. And I'm like, shit, does it? See, I, I was kind of hoping we'd get to a point where it was Tyrion versus Jamie because I wanted to talk about how they oh, foil well, each other super really well. Interesting. Um, but I, I do think it's Cersei. Cersei uh, is a better overall arc. Yeah, I, I'm kind of shocked, to be honest. Yeah, I am too. I um, never would have thought this. No, but when I actually confront it, Tyrion's arc is nothing short of phenomenal. He's this... I love the way he he loses... It's not other people seeing him differently. He loses self-delusions. Uh, yeah. He is this awesome, awesome shift from... A person who, you know, he genuinely believes he's a good person, and he loses that. He is stripped of these illusions about himself to the point that, you know, he goes from despising everything about his father to straight up telling the man that, I am you, writ small. Yeah. 
and then you have Cersei, which goes the complete opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. I think, oh man, this, this one hurts my soul, At, you know? <laughs> Tyrion's, yeah, no, I, I agree. At Tyrion's best in Clash of Kings, I don't think there is a Cersei chapter that tops it. I don't However, either. As a however, consistent point of view. Yeah. I, I, I mean, again, something I did, uh, you know, we brought up multiple times so far. I look forward to her chapters more than I do Tyrion's in Feast, in Dance. Yeah, at this point of the series, I do too. Yeah. Maybe that'll um, change when Tyrion gets to Danny. Maybe. I, but, I'm, I'm really looking forward to their interactions, but for the time being, yeah. I, I do think we give this to Cersei, which kind of amazes me. But Yeah, no, I'm time. baffled, but I think just yeah. the way, and a lot of her growth is shown retroactively, right? It's shown through the Valonqar prophecy, and it's shown, I'm, I'm sure I butchered that, I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> And it's shown through the events with Rhaegar and Jamie way back and, and everything. But mm. uh, we just, in a single book, we get this just beautiful tapestry painted about her entire life. And it is just, yeah. Tyrion no, incredible. has a higher ceiling for me as a character. I think by the end of the series, he has a higher overall potential. But, mm. which is funny because we've had more chapters from Tyrion's point of view, but we've just seen more on a character growth standpoint from Cersei. Yeah, and that I think is really what it comes down to for me. Yeah, no, I agree. And before you know, hurries us on. I think a, an interesting <laughs> thing is they're both, <laughs> to an extent, uh, obviously it is character growth, but it's almost character degradation. Oh yeah, in that they are, you know, Cersei is just spiraling into complete insanity, and Tyrion, not necessarily insanity, but he's losing all these, all this denial about who he is as a person, and he's sort of. Reverting is the wrong word, but he's he's shifting into what he always was, which is a profoundly twisted little. Oh, that sounds bad because of dwarfism. Um, this twisted human being, <laughs> um, and it's really interesting. But yeah, I think Cersei takes this. Yeah, that was not where I thought that was going to go, but we got there. Oh, yeah, funny. Okay, your second matchup in semifinals is Aaron versus Theon. This one's pretty straightforward for me. Yeah, no, it is. It is Theon. Um, yeah, I would just like to say I love the fact that our semi-final, barring John, is just Greyjoys and Lannisters. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the thing with Aaron, right, is we've seen a man who is we've seen the the downward trajectory of him. Theon, we saw him start at a complete high, saw the entire downward trajectory, and now we're going back up. I, I don't even think I need to say yeah. more than that. He also, <laughs> like, Theon just, you know, you can't fight the quantity for yeah, a reason. I, yeah. Their entire fanfics that literally only focus on that. I don't <laughs> doubt it. No, but so, I mean, yeah. The thing is, we managed to see all of that through his perspective, whilst it is entirely about him the entire time. Even whilst mm -hmm. commenting on this huge important thing, Martin never loses the fact that this is Theon's chapter and this is Theon's progression. We never, Theon never, despite having all of this going on around him, he never devolves into a narrator. And no. that is just, it. that's huge for it's me. It's vital, yeah. Um, so yeah, Aaron never really stood a chance, but let's all no. salute him for making it to the semi. Let's, let's be honest, a character with like three chapters made it to the semi. Yeah, um, mind you, still. he got gifted it in terms of matchups. He had yeah, the easiest bracket here for sure, but he did. He got very, very lucky, but yeah. In any case, we moved. Hey, he made it. Okay. The drowned god has preserved him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your final matchup for semifinals is going to be Jamie versus John. I hate, yeah, I hate this. this. I hate this so much. Yeah, I hate this so much. This is my this, this is the final for me. I I love I love Cersei, agree. but this is the final for me. Yeah, I think look, no matter what happens, whoever goes through in this match does take it overall. I yeah. think we can both quite conclusively state that. Yeah, I mean Cersei is honestly a closer match than I had thought in my head. But yeah, no, this yeah. to me, I was like, okay, is it John or is it Jamie? But I think, I think for me, and feel free to disagree with me here, the thing it boils down to, John is the most vital plot of the entire yes. series. Jamie is the best character yeah, of I the agree. entire series. It, this, is, and, this comes back down to when I was talking about Davos in the sense that, and this is not true for John. I do love John mm -hmm. and his character is incredible. Yeah. A lot of my fondness for John's chapters does admittedly come from the fact that he's an incredible character, 
but he is also just has the benefit of being put in incredibly interesting situations almost all the time. There yeah. have been chapters with, with with Jamie that had it been almost any other character in that chapter, I would have found it dull. I mean, and there's some, some of my yeah. favorite chapters in the entire series. Yeah. If you put so, John in those chapters to me, it could not make those chapters. Yeah. If you put any, if you put any character beyond the wall and infiltrating Mance Raiders camp, I'm gonna find that interesting. Yeah. The, some of Jamie's Harren Hall chapters should suck. Oh yeah, like almost nothing interesting happens. It's the bad one with Brian cool. should tank, but yeah. it's great. <laughs> just phenomenal because he is oh god i could we could do a whole podcast just talking about jamie Easily. we really could we probably should at some point um <laughs> no jamie but, lannister worship session <laughs> yeah um i would just like to take a moment because as you said john's situations are awesome he has man's raider who is a stunningly I mean, you will not character. you will not find a bigger i mean you two know this especially with me you yeah. will not find a bigger mance raider fanboy than i am no and i you just want... that because you yeah you absolutely do like him more than me but he's mance is a top three favorite character for me so yeah yeah i uh, he's in my top 10 i'm not sure he's definitely not in my top three but yeah i yeah. adore that um he has so many that. incredible characters around him at all times just yeah really John helping him. really boosted by his ensemble uh, which which Jamie does <sighs> lack, to be honest. To be, to yeah, be brutally does. honest, he's not surrounded by interesting people a lot of the time. Hell, when he goes um, back to the Riverlands, we have yeah, to get like, introduced to most of the people he's around. Yeah, we know nothing mean, about look, any of them except for Cerulean. Yeah, I like Adam Marbran. Fine, you know, yeah. he's fun. He's nice. He he's been a really great part of a fanfic that I can't remember the name of, but that's besides the point. But he, you know, he doesn't come close to you know. No, I like think okay, what's well, you know, Mace Eamon, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I've completely Jay or Mormont, I mean, Sam when it's not his POV, Gren, Pip, all yeah. these characters, and how you know, Melisandre, you can, yeah, you cannot dismiss, as I said last round, John's subversion of the hero's journey because I yeah, will no. never stop loving that. But, but I, and I've said this a lot, and I apologize for my repetitiveness, character first and foremost, yeah. and Jamie's character, his progression as a character, to me, is flawless. I mean, who's... Uh, that doesn't mean it's objectively flawless, but to me yeah. as a person, it's perfect. There are, there are chapters for me that are made simply by Jamie Lannister's character progression. A lot of those Riverlands chapters. There are some interesting yeah. ones. Once he gets with around Edmure and Sir Brendan, those are great because of other people as well, granted. Mm -hmm. But for mm -hmm. a lot of those chapters, the most interesting person around him is, I think her name is Jenna Lannister, right? Yeah. Or something of the sort. That's the yeah, most yeah. interesting character around him for most of those chapters. Those chapters are made simply on his character progression. Name me yeah. a, a chapter that the reason why it's your favorite chapter is because of John's progression in the chapter. Go. Yeah, that, that just isn't one. And he's great, um, he's consistent throughout, but there's no chapter that his progression carries on its own, the same way Jamie's carries about half of his chapters in Feast for Crows. He, almost his entire arc in Feast for Crows hinges on yeah. just him as a person. And yeah, I, I think we've made up. Hell, even the King's Guard stuff. Yeah. Where he's like some of his internal monologues when he's reading the book and writing and entries and talking to the other yeah. King's Guard members. Oh, yeah, I actually it, think Jamie him and the White this. Book is it's a sleeper hit for my one of my favorite chapters of all time. It, yeah, no, it is. It would be really high up there. For, I honestly didn't yeah. think of it as that until now. No, but yeah. it would be really high up there for me. Yeah, no, I, I think. Yeah, Jamie wins. Yeah. Okay. God, people are gonna hate us. Oh, uh, we've eliminated Jon Snow. Daenerys went out in the first round. Oh, uh, we're gonna get just <laughs> brutalized. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for the final victory spot, I have a feeling your decision won't take long, but the conversation no. will take decades. <laughs> Cersei, Theon, and Jamie. Okay, I love okay, Theon, so, but he just gets fucking obliterated. Yeah, we, we've accepted <laughs> like, that Jamie wins. And Theon is yeah. Theon is like Theon's an asteroid drifting through space between two suns. Yeah, I. I He's great. Want, Asteroids are cool, but are they're going to get uh, swallowed. Yeah, yeah. I I want to root for Theon. I really do because I have such but a love for his POV. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. This and, is the this is the man who was repeating his own name for half a book against Jamie yeah. Lannister. I love Theon, yeah. but he's just I, 
In this case, the twin cest really is the wincest, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yes, I've been shaving that just in case. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's brilliant. So yeah, um, we've said a lot about Theon, so we can we can knock him out. Oh, we've said a lot about and Jamie. <laughs> we've said a lot and about all of them, and yeah, look, Jamie Jamie wins. We yeah, yeah. made that clear, and John would be second, uh, at least in my opinion. God, Cersei might be third now. But yeah, I there isn't. I mean, yeah, Tyrion was the only one that I could challenge, and we straight up, you yeah. know, we made our choice there. So yes, I I think my top three points of views are Jamie, Cersei, Tyrion, which makes me sound like such a prick. <laughs> but sorry, Jamie, uh, Germ- John, Jamie, Cersei. John, Cersei, but yeah, yes, yes. Um, might say a lot about me as a person, but at the same time, <sighs> I stand by that. Um, so, you know, round of applause for Cersei, who did, I think, we knew she was going to do well. I'm not sure either of us quite figured how well. No, I figured she could make like a semi final or something, maybe, but I didn't. Like, yeah. I figured if she's up against Tyrion, John, or even a couple others yeah. in my head, I'm like, she's done. I would never have put her before Tyrion before I actually thought about it. Um, but yeah, no. So, God, I love that. And now a moment to just recognize someone who has had exactly one chapter, but is my absolute favorite chapter of the entire series, and that is Kevin Lannister. Another I was going to say, you're going to go to the dance epilogue, aren't you? Yeah, it, the, the dance epilogue is... Oh, it's so good. It's so fucking good. I could do a podcast on that chapter. Um, I bad start doing Game of Thrones. I mean, they'd bang. But yeah, <laughs> it'd be fun. Uh, don't have the time. If I can't record audiobooks, I definitely can't record that. <laughs> yeah. But, this was our consolation prize for you ghosting us with audiobooks for nearly six months. Yeah, congratulations. You get to enjoy my six months? dulcet tones. Let's not dwell on the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in any case, as the as the proud owner of a widow's whale replica, I can say <laughs> with full contentment that Jamie Lannister is our favorite point of view character. Sorry, objectively the best point of view yeah of course this, this is a is definitive is list nobody definitive. can remember, remember i said this is a definitive list and then we went and eliminated danny in the first round <laughs> yeah imagine doing to that. be fair this is brackets every time you do this bracket yeah. it's a little yeah, bit yeah. different that's true that's true. jamie just wins every time because he's objectively the best character i mean that no one can actually beat him and the final is always going to end up being some combination of him john jay uh percy and uh i don't know Tyrion and ned maybe yeah. You say that until the next time we do it, and the first four people on my list are all four of those people, and you have to decide essentially who wins the entire thing oh, God. in the second round. You know, our, our answers wouldn't change. I will say we should do this again after wins. Again, yeah, fingers crossed. We should do yeah, this again after wins. Um, yeah. No, I absolutely agree. I would also it's... quite enjoy it if we did one talking about House of the Dragon once that's out. Yeah, that'd be cool too. Yeah. It is, yeah, oh man, um, it's so painful. Ooh, we could to do the Targaryen monarchs ranking. Oh god, I, I'd need a fire and blood reread. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially what you're hearing is, if these two haven't completely bored you out of your minds, feel free to tell us, and I might let them convince me to do this again. Yeah, there's, this, there are going to be two kinds of people who listen to this, the people who are just, who adore this, and the people who are just bored out of their fucking mind the entire time. Yeah, there isn't really going to be an so I apologize to those people and to the other ones. You are the ones who will inherit the earth. Go forth and conquer. And with that, let's roll the outro. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Chaos Central podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, consider leaving a review on Amazon, Apple Music, and Spotify. If you listened on YouTube, a like on the video and subscription to the channel would also be greatly appreciated, and all of those are 100% free. If you would like to discuss my work with myself and thousands of others, consider joining us over on the ACI100 Discord server at discord.gg ACI100. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can take your support to the next level over on Patreon in exchange for early access to not only this podcast, but all of my written works as well, plus other patron-exclusive benefits. Full details and direct links to all of those, plus all of my other ongoing projects and so much more, can be found on the homepage of my website at aci100.com. That's aci100.com. Thank you all so much.